Recently added to Warframe are three types of Archon Shards, able to provide semi-permanent bonuses to your Warframes. This video will focus on the Azure Shards, broadly labelled as the defensive ones. What are the options, how do they compare, and what can really benefit from them? I'm Nick Engineer, let's solve a practical problem. Let's start with a little bit of context on just how much customization there is to consider. There are 15 total options to pick from for each shard slot across the three colours, with a total of 5 shard slots. The order in which you pick each buff doesn't matter to the end result. For anyone curious as to how you figure out the total options, this comes under the combinatorial mathematics of multi-sets often referred to as stars and bars. For everyone else who just wants a number, that's 11,628 different ways of applying 5 shards. The options increase to 15,504 if we also include leaving a slot empty as an option, or as high as 324,632 options if we also consider normal and Talvord shards to be different choices. They're half choices really, while the end results are different, you don't get a choice in which type of shard you've got. So let's look at the buffs that these Azure shards can give you. Plus health simply increases the amount of damage you can take. This means you have more time to react, and can survive even stronger hits without being one-shot. This is more effective when using a Warframe with damage reduction on health, such as high armor or damage resistance abilities. Similar to plus health, plus armor increases the amount of damage you can take on health before dying. At a base of plus 150 armor, it effectively means you can tank extra damage equal to half your health value, or 75% of your health value with a Talford shard. Unlike the plus health shard though, you continue to benefit from the plus armor bonus when you combine it with any source of healing. With more armor, each hit point restored is worth more than without that armor. A full set of plus armor shards on Banshee Prime would make any health and healing, such as from Subsume Gloom, about 2.8 times as effective against the same enemies, 3.6 times as effective if using all Talforge. So whether you're working with a squishy frame or a tanky one, armor will always give you better long-term results thanks to healing. However, sometimes you just need more effective hit points to survive whatever's happening. To optimize your effective hit points, you can mix health and armor shards to find the optimal result. You might expect to need some crazy EHB calculation to optimize this, to the point you need an app to figure it out for you. But actually for once, it's simple. If your health is 300 or more higher than your armor, apply an armor shard. Otherwise, apply a health shard. That's it, that's how you optimize your EHB. So say we're looking at this Banshee Prime and trying to maximize her effective hit points in health. Her health is 300 and armor 125. The health isn't 300 more than the armor, so we apply a health shard, bringing her up to 450 health or 525 if the shard was Talforged. If we want to use a second shard, now her health is more than 300 plus her armor, so we'd apply an armor shard. The shards have the same value, meaning this would alternate back and forth until we had 3 health and 2 armor shards on her for optimal effective hit points. If instead the framing question is a full umbral lavos, we can see the health is 599 points higher than the armor. To optimize his EHP, we'd go for 3 normal armor shards and 2 normal health shards, following the same rule. As I mentioned earlier though, to optimize the healing on lavos, we'd instead want all 5 shards to be set to plus armor. A related shard option to health and armor is the 5 health per second regeneration. Unlike health and armor boosts, the health regen shard option doesn't increase your ability to survive massive damage. Instead, it's a useful tool to recover health passively. At 5 hit points per second, it will provide as much health over 30 seconds as the health shard provides in total. With just a single shard, this can provide enough healing to cover small chip damage that can accumulate like the toxin damage you might suffer from a Nox unit. This allows you to forego other healing options like Medipet Kit, Life Strike, or the Regeneration Aura in favor of something more offensive or for utility. Now, a full suite of 5 regen shards would provide you with 25 health per second, or 37.5 health per second if they're all Talforged. For comparison, Wisp's Vitality Mode from Reservoirs has a base healing of 30 health per second, while Oberon's Renewal is a base 40 health per second. So stacking regeneration shards allows you to get roughly the same unboosted healing constantly at no energy cost, but this does come at the opportunity cost of not having any other bonus in those slots. Now as armor directly relates to regeneration, where more armor means each hit point regenerated is more valuable, 
there is a little bit of optimization available when you're using regen shards as your only source of healing. If you are using normal azure shards, all five should be regen unless your total armor is below 300. If your armor is lower, use four regen shards and one armor shard for the highest effect of healing. Likewise, if you're using all tower forge shards, use one armor shard if your total armor is below 600, or two armor shards if your total armor is below 150. This again will optimize the effective hit points you regenerate per second. Where you have other healing available to you, such as reservoirs, renewal, or a non-warframe source like Magus Elevate, then armor shards are almost certainly the better defensive option. But this brings us on to the plus shield option. Unlike health, shields restore themselves with no effort needed from you other than to not get hit for a bit. In many games, that would be an absolute win. Not so much in Warframe. Warframes which are relying on higher shields to defend should be focusing on high damage reduction and using shield restoration abilities already. Extra hit points in shields does not significantly improve on this. Likewise, Warframes which are using shield gating to defend are actively harmed by using plus shield shards. When looking at passive shield regeneration, each plus 150 shields will only increase it by 3 shields per second. For comparison, Grendel, with the lowest non-zero shield pool, regenerates 18.75 shields per second at max rank already. A full complement of normal azure shards would not even double this, and Grendel has no use for the additional 750 max shield hit points. Instead, the few situations that would benefit from plus shields are those where the shields are used for anything other than direct defense. Harrow's Pennant scales with current shields, Steinax's passive scales with current shields, Valkyr's Paralysis deals damage proportional to the current shields, and Hildren's abilities are fueled by having shields. The damage on Paralysis isn't noteworthy, while the other three frames all have abilities to generate shields and overshields, making the plus shield shard of low value. However, there is one use case which actually makes practical sense. If you are using the Helminth ability Parasitic Armor, it converts your maximum shields into armor for the ability's duration. At base, this is a one-to-one -one conversion, meaning if you have more than 100% strength, then every point of shields will be worth more than one point of armor. Because of this, a plus shield shard giving you 150 shield maximum would provide you more armor than an armor shard would. This is doubly useful for abilities which scale from armor. So Iron Skin, Warding Halo, Snow Globe, Mass Vitrify, Tectonics, and Rumblers all scale on strength and armor to determine the hit points of the ability. When you combine this with Parasitic Armor, the Shield Shards will give you a bigger boost than either an Armor Shard or a Crimson Strength Shard in most cases. It's ironic really, the best time to use Shields are when you convert them into something else. Finally for the Azure Shards, we have plus maximum energy. While this on its own doesn't increase the amount of energy you start with, boosting the max you can have allows you to benefit more from surges of energy gain such as from Arcane Energize, starting energy such as the Preparation Mod, or a lucky break on energy orb drops. This in turn then helps you maintain your abilities should energy income become scarce for some time. Importantly, as all Archon Shard bonuses are after mods, it is literally just plus 50 energy max. Hello! For comparison, Flow gives plus 150% energy max, and Prime Flow gives plus 275% energy max. A full set of normal Azure Shards would still be a lower energy capacity boost than Prime Flow for all Warframes. That said, replacing Prime Flow, even with a lesser overall energy max, can free up the slot for something else in your build. If you're not already using the Preparation Mod, it can be combined with the Energy Max bonus to give you up to full energy at the start of every mission. In Sanctuary Onslaught, you are reset to starting energy with every round, allowing you to repeatedly benefit from the max energy bonus. If you already have preparation on your build, replacing flow would allow you to focus onto other casting stats you may have cut short on, such as casting speed from Natural Talent. I mentioned preparation and Natural Talent, as both of these mods themselves can be replaced by fewer Amber Shards than it takes Azure Shards to replace Prime Flow, so it's usually better to go for them instead. Energy Max Shards also have a niche use in energy reduction sorties, where your max energy is reduced by 75%. In that mission, a single Azure Shard will give you a boost of 12.5 max energy. This is enough to allow, for example, Rhino and Rhino Prime to cast Iron Skin at 100% efficiency without a flow mod. This is an exceedingly niche application, mind you, and I wouldn't recommend spending 50% bile or locking a shard in place for the occasional sortie condition but it is at least an option for those tighter builds. 
In general then, the Azure Shards are not huge game changers. Broadly speaking, I would suggest adding armor to tankier frames, health regen to squishy ones without healing or armor if they can heal, or you can add energy max when you're using the preparation mod or the equivalent amber shard bonus. Plus health and plus shields are best kept to min-maxing specific builds. In all cases, when it comes to Azure Shards, my general advice is not to overthink it. Given the relatively weak impact of most of the options, the Shards are a small passive bonus to go alongside your real build. I hope this helps you choose the best ways to use your Azure Shards. Let me know in the comments where you're using your ones. And as always, apply Shards, get tank, and fight well, Tenno.